Thank you, Yuda. That was a good healing movie. <laughs> Reminded me a little bit of that movie with Jennifer Aniston and Paul Rudd, object of my affection, where they just have all these relationship spins and brings in the gay thing and brings in all kinds of Alan Alden, all those in it, and yeah. But it all comes through into a a sense of, of healing. Like there's more of a sense of non judgment and acceptance. Like a sense that it all comes through. So that's what makes it a nice holiday movie. It's, it's got that vibration of Exposing all the private thoughts and like it just brings it all together, like many facets of a diamond, and then yeah, you know, somehow the shine just comes through with all the little twists and turns. Like that, that one with Jennifer Aniston, she was she was going uh, to have a baby with this one man, and then she fell in love with Paul Rudd, who was gay. And then, oh, it just took all kinds of spins round and round and round. But in the end, that's the, the kind of scene that they had, um, where they, it just was acceptance, you know, with the, with the child and with everything. It was really beautiful. So it was good. That was like a little Christmas scene at the end where mm -hmm. they all come together and, yeah. Be very good for these or something, but Deborah Winger, Shirley McLean, Jack Nicholson. They were in where Deborah Winger had cancer in terms of endearment. That was there's a number of these good movies that really kind of touch on a lot of those aspects, a lot of themes all rolled into one. But yeah, it's just more of a sense of acceptance. You can see the the foreshadowing with the Craig T. Nelson character, the father character, saying, We're gonna be fine no matter what happens, you know, that, that she could feel the presence of the spirit coming through. Yeah. It's beautiful. They all had good hearts, but you know, it took all these twists and turns and spins to kind of bring all the unconscious stuff up. A mother who's dying who doesn't want her son to make the wrong choice because she won't be there and you know all the, the protectionism and the, the different judgments, jealousies, the different stuff, the racial stuff, the gay stuff, you know. That's a good ambitious movie that <laughs> hacks it all in there. <laughs> And then Eric saying, what, what was that conversation about? Pause the movie, because it was your, your mother who passed away too. I thought, I was watching that whole thing, I said, oh. Eric's like saying, what's, what's that about? What was that thing about? Because that was a big healing scene, you know, with your mother dying and your sister and your father. And the, you know, all the love that was there, you know, beyond just the, the biological family was a you know, big family of love, so, yeah. That was interesting that that, you cued in and paused just at that moment. What's what's going on here? I thought, oh yeah, there you go, Eric. That's, that's your scene. <laughs> the mom's dying. <laughs> we played it out. We've all played it all out in so many ways. But, like that Chances Are movie, Peter Cetera and Sherry, we tried it on our own, meaning egoically, but deep inside we've known we'd be back to set things straight. Like that's why we've come seemingly to the world, just to set things straight, to come back into alignment with God, and let go of this time issue that we've got. It's a time addiction. That's what we tried it on our own. We tried to invent our own identity apart from spirit, and but deep inside, we've known we'd be back. 
to set things straight, to start to understand it's all simultaneous. It's only the time thing that is the problem. showed it really well, just all the craziness of everything, other judgments from the family and you know, and then all the unworthiness she seemed to have and mm. trying to the face of innocence. All those things just you just see how crazy that happens. Yeah. I can see it on the screen like that and all that happening at once just like Oh it's marvelous. You know, it's oh, just it's crazy. All of it's just ridiculous <laughs> really isn't it? But but the love's always here, yeah, it's the beautiful thing that the bodies seem to come and go, little ones seem to be born and other ones go. But love's always there. Just it's never going anywhere, and it's the beautiful thing. So why play all those games? You know? Just a little drop. As soon as we spot it, we just want to lose it. We spot it, we've got it, we've got to let it go. It's like the love shining through. Yeah, it's masterful how it gets flushed up. It's fun to see it in such a concentrated way. It's you know. It's actually a delight to see it so exposed and so raw. Reminding me of uh, Dan in real life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me too. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. I did, I like the scene when he was talking about his dream. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that's very deep. <laughs> and I, I, it's like, he didn't hold back, he didn't try to like... Yeah. Like, he really was saying it as it is, it was so beautiful. Yeah. Like, even like the way he was saying it, like, he mm. didn't hold back. Was, yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah, great transparency. Yeah, very deep. Like, this is deep. Or like, this is deep. Like, this is... It's like, this is deep. I almost like... Or something like... I was like, this is all like... You don't miss that. Like, that's something that can be missed. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of good teachings in there about the way the Spirit uses all the... Like, them coming together in the end, because her with her seemingly neurosis, and him with his his ease and simplicity. Yeah, absolutely. It was beautiful, it's beautiful to see it on the big screen when neurosis and simplicity <laughs> are brought together. When she, he would just, um, at the table at the bar, just slip her hand, <laughs> his hand across and just like, just stop, you can just... Stop that now, you know, it's the spirit. Yeah, totally the spirit. Yeah. He was like the angel figure. Yeah, yeah. She was playing the Woody Allen character. <laughs> you know, Woody Allen character. <laughs> but she's, she's just perfect for that, she's so good. That's why Sex in the City was such a success. We watched one of her, when we were out in California. Oh, yeah. LA Story. We, LA it was one Story. of her Steve Martin early ones. Wow. She played this twirling. Uh, it's one. like Jessica, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. Like, I've never seen her before. Yeah. But like, she was dancing and twirling yeah, as she yeah. came out here when she really yeah. was stuff. I'm like, oh, oh I remember gosh, that she girl was, from yeah, that. Yeah, she was I twirling know. around. <laughs> It's like almost like that's her true self or something. When I saw her in yeah. that Steve Martin movie, LA Story, I'm like, that's like almost like she's playing her real self, not mm -hmm. this. I was like, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm like, very wow. early, early, early. Yeah. And early Rachel McAdams there, yeah. Ten, <laughs> ten years ago. Oh, is it really? It was oh, 2005. Ten years. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Because some of these, yeah, we know that these actors and actresses, they, they make all of our 
are moving. Okay, okay. We've, yeah. we've had these characters, okay, you're going to play that, yeah. we're going to do that, and we're going to really show it this time, and yeah, I don't know if we'll ever make movies ourselves, but that's that's kind of a swirl now coming up, but, but when I was out in Universal Studios and going around all the sets and seeing where they filmed all these movies way, way, way back, oh, 40s and 30s, way back, but Maria, who was driving with me, she was just like, yeah, that's what you do, it's like, this is, she said, this is all you, Universal Studios is all you, and I said, yeah, but mm -hmm. they spend the millions and the billions to hire the actors, producers, directors, and make the movies, and then we incorporate them, and then that's the best way we have been able to collaborate with Hollywood. Because mm. Ego made the world and it makes all the movies and it spun it all out in the <coughs> instant, but the Holy Spirit just masterfully uses everything that the Ego made, so we've kind of incorporated Hollywood. We just, I just was going around nodding Johnny Carson way, thank you Johnny. Thank you, Steven Spielberg, Jimmy Kimball speaking to us in the little tour bus. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you all. Job well done. You acted it all out and the Spirit just takes all that, which is just crumbs, and then lifts it up and points to something way beyond the crumbs, way beyond the Hollywood. So, and that's kind of been part of our contribution to the Great Awakening, is that the movies, that's what Susan Huckaluck just wrote me today, just saying there needs to be some way of expressing this curriculum, because it's... In the broader, yeah. bigger way. Yeah, I had Sarah change more. that on our, our Google Edwards. We had movies, audio, video, or we had movie, movie pathway to God, oh, we yeah. put up there which is really our contribution. Well, I think we are going to change our Movie Watchers Guide to Movie Watchers Bible. Next one. That's going to be the name. <laughs> Bring the Bible. So, kind of like, more stable. Make it like, more stable. Alright? So, it's going to be bigger. Maybe this big. Maybe hard cover. You know? Whole nine, nine yards with it. But it's kind of a symbol. Of the, it's it's like it's very it's kind of like it's something to, it's trustworthy it's like it's very trustworthy this path of movies awakening the movies mm -hmm. it's fun but it's not like oh ha ha, ha it's so fun like let it go it's it's deep it's like you you apply it like this like mm -hmm. with such depth you, it's like it's you'll wake up mm -hmm. so it's it's. So I think that, you know, like, that's all part of it, making it. <laughs> Stable. Yeah. In the mind. Yeah. to remind myself to keep relaxing and pausing throughout that movie because I was cringing so hard at the beginning like just um uh, I don't remember her name but uh, the fiance Sarah Jessica yeah Sarah Jessica Parker just like everything she said I don't know what it was reflecting in my mind but it was just like oh like oh not another scene <laughs> 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 like I just oh okay. and then when Ben was saying like 
Oh, no, I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I need to stop. <laughs> it's good. It's like, relax. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that thing of the reactions, just watching reactions, because mm. we're not responsible for what people say or do or whatever, but just watch those reactions. It's a gift. I talked to a guy today in, in uh, South Africa, Cape Town, South Africa, and he's been in news and media, so he's watched so much news and media. He said, it's getting pretty wacky and crazy. But then he said at one point in the argument, he said, yeah, he said, some years ago, I said, I really got angry at George W. Bush. I just got so angry. And then, But then he said, no, with the chorus, I started to realize, yeah, he's doing you, George is doing you a favor. George is help, helping bring all this stuff up. And he said, oh, he helped me so much. He helped me so much. He's been in news and broadcasting and media for 40 years, but yeah, we had a good, good chat. He mentioned Trump, and I said, yeah, it's, there's amazing acting of acting out neurosis, acting out bigotry, acting out racism, acting out everything, just all the thoughts, just so you can see the unreality of them. It's like a, you can't help but have gratitude for it to be acted out so, in such living, vivid color and detail, just so you can see what's, if there's anything that's still unconscious or still believed to be real. Nowadays we have, yeah, Facebook, YouTube, television, all the ways like the mirrors are everywhere, every direction you look. It's really a precious time. I used to say that that was the the Chinese curse. May you live in in busy time, but with the courts, it's not a curse anymore. It's it's actually a blessing to have so many mirrors in every direction. It's a fast track. It's not a curse at all. It's a curse to try to remain asleep and unconscious and kind of bury your head in the sand and turn away and avoid, avoid looking. That's the curse. And all this stuff that's getting flushed up everywhere, like this movie was a, a good one. Just one scene after the next and the next. It's actually a blessing. I'm yeah. grateful for that. I didn't think, I, mean, I didn't expect myself to like have that much like cringing going on. But was, yeah, it felt pretty tense actually. A lot of, like, okay, there's a lot here for me. Yeah. It's, it's a blessing. Yeah, I like how the, it just shifted so much. More towards the end of the movie, there was just all these shifts that were happening, and all these things getting exposed, and assumptions getting just exposed one after the next, and again, and then again, and around, and around, and around, and yeah, it's a speed up. It's, there's a line in the Course where Jesus says, when you decide upon the form of what you want, you lose the understanding of its purpose. Which kind of goes back to that thing in the Bible, King David, the 23rd Psalm, the first line, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because it's the wanting form outcomes is, is idolatry. It doesn't really matter what, either. It's a great line in the first, twenty third Psalm, first line, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We talked about that a lot on the trip to California, that, that when you have a mind, it's so powerful, and the mind does want. 
then you have to first get in touch with the power of your wanting. You can't ghost over the wanting. You can't ghost over the power. Because that won't bring any healing. You have to really get in touch with what is it that I want. And really recognize the power of the wanting. Before you can let it go and come into a divine rest, you have to really be very, very honest to look at the power of the wanting. What is it that I want? Yeah, I feel like uh, just getting in touch with them. We were talking about it a little bit last night. Um, you know, that, yeah, I must really want this victim role. You know, because that's what I, I make for myself. And, uh, whoa. Well, who would want that? But I mean, this is a very powerful mind. You know, that's what's coming to me. That's what I want. And I go, oh, Jesus. That's great recognition to start to just acknowledge that, because that's that's the way out. The power of the one thing. It takes it deeper right away, instead of just saying, oh, I'm, I'm at the mercy of something. Mm. It's the first step in really empowerment. So if we deny the power of the one thing, then we deny the power of the mind. And we have to come at it. That's why there's so much allowance and acknowledgement that's part of the journey. Everyone who seems to come here has a belief system and then they order and arrange their perception based on that belief system. So no one is beyond belief. Everyone who seems to come has organized the cosmos based on a belief system and then, you know, it's typical to say this belief is better than that belief and who's got the right beliefs and who's got the wrong beliefs, but the whole system, the whole menagerie of deception, and and then to call upon the spirit to say, take me beyond this whole thing. Because most of us were raised with with good and bad and right and wrong, and there's just no universal agreement between family to family, person to person, culture to culture. In some cultures, thou, thou shalt not kill. In some cultures, they eat people. You know, there's cannibalism. It just shows you like this range of things, and you know the mind's trying to, oh, this is right, and this is wrong, this is true, and this and this, but it hasn't reached a state of seeing the power of the one thing and. You know, it can't see the beliefs, they're all the same. It's sure that some are better than others. And that's where the victimization comes in, you know. Some, someone's worse and someone's better, or something outside has power. Someone did something, someone took advantage, you know, that's all part of the whole, the whole system. Yeah, it's got to be seen as false. First, I'm going to see that I do believe it. Yeah. That's part of the, what Nikita was bringing up last night about the whims and the two years ago and then showing up again. But part of the mind's like saying, mm, there's more than whims. So it's like the Holy Spirit saying, mm, okay, maybe so, but are you going to let me, the Holy Spirit, direct this undoing or not? That's the question. You know, it's not wrong to want things, it's just the Holy Spirit will has to direct the whims. And there's no escaping this world. So, you know, that that's part of getting in. The whims are getting in touch with the power of the mind, and the, the power of the wanting. What's the difference between a preference, an ego preference, and a whim? Is the whim is the Holy Spirit's use 
of the preference to unwind you from the preference. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's use of time to teach you that there is no time. You, you see how the mind wants to judge. You can see that acted out in this movie. You know, these mm -hmm. racial tensions, these thing of homosexual and gay and you know at the, at the table it got pretty intense you know where the mother and father you know the father was just like stop <laughs> like this is but then he felt he needed to apologize at some point because he was judging you know everyone was still judging and, and there was no love coming through when the judgments were there so so, and that's the thing with apologies too, there's, there's almost like people feel there has to be apologies, but even if you go to the core of an apology, it's, it's saying something wrong was done, mm -hmm. and something must be done to make amends mm -hmm. for what was wrong, and you can see that that's still part of the sticky quicksand mm -hmm. of the ego. Mm -hmm. There was a beautiful movie that came out, Allie McGraw and Ryan and Neil love story, the line that everyone remembers from that movie, love is never having to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Quite a powerful, people go, whoa, what's that? Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, love is transcendent. It's, it's beyond the possibility of, of a sorry or the wrongdoing. So we never forgive what for what has been done to us or what we believe should have been done that wasn't done. That's still, you know, it's, it's still the ego. Jesus tells us it's not forgiveness at all. It's almost like you're trying to bestow forgiveness, but deep down you don't really believe they deserve it. <laughs> not seeing that it's yourself that's that's holding on to the grievance and trying to use a make-believe forgiveness to kind of throw some icing on top of it while still keeping the grievance. Mm -hmm. Even in his song of prayer, can't that he even give, has a name for that forgiveness. Jesus calls it forgiveness to destroy. Mm -hmm. He's really direct about this. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting use of words. Forgiveness to destroy. <laughs> like he doesn't mince words about that. So. <sighs> that was a good one. We've got some good ones on the Nikita and I hadn't seen that movie. That was <laughs> <laughs> on the server pulling a few things off you can see her. I heard the name but I I hadn't seen the movie. I didn't know the name, I just kept thinking of certain scenes in this movie. Mm -hmm. And then I just I just at the dinner table I said, There's a deaf guy in it and she and Sarah was like Oh, it's this movie. Like, oh. Oh. <laughs> That's all she said. There's a dead guy. Of course, I can think of anything. This guy in this movie. That's how we get our movies. There's a dead guy. <laughs> That's our game. You know how they play that game? Yeah. <laughs> With that short shorts. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and some of them were signing that couldn't sign. That yeah. time when Sarah Jessica Parker was signing, <laughs> they got some great moments. <laughs> it's, it's involuntary, right? That was hilarious. <laughs> Spirit had me watch a selection of movies with uptight girls who needed to let go of control during the summer. <laughs> we a row, like key scenes in the movie, just to click this scene and just, I was a little... <laughs> <laughs> and they were being sent these angels who were helping them, like in that yeah. way, again, just yeah. through acceptance. Just to like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful how that works. Mm. Mm.
there is just that one room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Priceless. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's one of those things. But with, with, with Diane Keaton, her thing, and then the little granddaughter. Oh, well, she signed something that wasn't. What did he say? The, the daughter, the granddaughter, could felt it, even though she didn't know what it was. She could yeah. See, Diane Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's beautiful. That those movies really kind of really do give you a demonstration of how the healing works because it's the the neuroticism is loosened. It's almost like it's massaged mm -hmm. and loosened. Almost like you had a knot in your back. Mm -hmm. You had somebody a really good massage therapist mm -hmm. who just got down and down into the deep tissues to get the knot. That's what this this these kind of healing movies do. And that's the thing that Mr. Nobody's about, because, you know, he's, he, he believed he had to make the, the impossible choice between the love of his mother and the love of his father at the, the, at the train, at the train tracks. And, and then all these, these hypothetical scenarios spring out from believing you have to make the impossible choice. Love doesn't make a choice. There is no choice in oneness. But he, Neo, Nemo, basically, Nemo, Neo, Nobody, Nemo, Nobody, Nemo, Nemo Nobody. <laughs> had, <laughs> they're all the same. They're all yeah. the same. Yeah. The lead, he had to make the impossible choice, and then he spins out all these hypotheticals, and, and then the guy who's like the reporter is trying to, but didn't, did, did you die? What, did she die? What, who's one? this one? Which one? You know, he's trying to make linear sense out of it, and, and Nemo's just trying to work out his forgiveness. And then he finally, he finally makes it right before he, he dies, you know. He just has one big smile on his face, and he goes, Anna, Anna, because that, it's progression with Anna, you know, seemingly missing Anna, near misses, and all these things eventually you know, finding her in a train station and then, you know, the raindrop that comes down and washes away the phone number, all those things, that was, that was playing out the heartbreak of separation from God. The heartbreak of which, trying to choose and find a love in form, and playing it out with three different ones and all this and this, and then finally, that was, I, I feel like that was his defining atonement moment when he he just said Anna with a big smile on his face because it was like a realization that he had not lost Anna's love and that Anna was not outside of him. Mm -hmm. that Anna was him and he was with her always. He'd never not been with her. You know, to see one brother, one sister as yourself, that's all it takes. And he, ah, he just got the biggest smile, whatever, a hundred and how many? Eight. hundred and eight years old. Eight. And then with a big smile on his face, like, and then he seemed to, to die, but then he, he woke up laughing and with everything going backwards, <laughs> you know, like in quantum physics, you know, no difference between forwards or backwards, yeah. Well, Mr. Sam. <laughs> Right, laughing with with a ha 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 South African crowd. <laughs> Eric has to rise early so they can get to bed <laughs> after the, the gathering. Yeah, even earlier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>